Oh my goodness. We're at the Phoenix Library now. And they have a whole slew of wild cats back here. That um, I was wondering who was feeding them. And this sweet little Asian lady came back to feed them and uh, named Tokiko. And then she came up to us, sitting at the bench over there, and tried to give me five bucks. And it looks like two fives. And I told her, it's really hard for me to to use money because I can't go into stores and leave my sheep. And uh, and I, I said, uh, if you have any people food, you know, because she came to feed the feed the cats. And I was like, if you had any people food, that would that would uh, I'd be really happy with that. Anything. And she's like, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go down to the uh, the corner, the Mexican restaurant. And she came back with a freaking huge ass burrito. Yay. I think it's chicken. I don't usually eat chicken. It's like my least favorite meat. I'm not really fond of meat in the first place, but this is full of low because it was gifted. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Enjoying the lunch, taking a rest, what? and filming. Sorry. Solar panel. Yeah. Cool. Gratefully, because it um, they uh, looks like they. Um, covered up their outlet down there in the last year. Oh. Yeah, how are you? My name's Aaron Witchers. Tom. Tom, nice to meet you. Okay, I just thought you said you didn't know who you were, so. Good looking now for your community. Okay. Uh, how long are you going to be here? I don't know why. Okay. Well, I just, they have no call. I just saw you, but if they call and want you to leave, i got to ask. They haven't called yet. But... Oh, no, the Phoenix Library is awesome with me. Okay. I've been here for, I've lived here for... 10 years and, and had my pet goats and sheep for five of those. Okay. Yeah, the librarians are, all, actually this is one of the, the coolest uh, librarians, um, set of librarians that I've uh, ever met. Okay. Cool. Honestly, yeah, thank you though. So some lady had her purse stolen. You haven't seen anybody running around with a blue purse or something, have you? Haven't seen anyone except for uh, the mowing people. Yeah, I just saw that. Okay, yeah. all right, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Um, what was your name once more? Tom. Tom, thank you, brother. Have a good day. Blessings. Doing all right. How are you? Doing okay. I'm filming. Sorry. What's up? I'm just uh, documenting. Oh, okay. Uh, do you use my ID? No. Why? No, because I'm gonna write you a ticket. For what? Because you can't have livestock in the city. It says what law? City ordinance. That's. Uh, there's only an ordinance against having them in the backyard, okay. keeping them in town. Oh, the wording is. Keeping them in town right now. So. No, I'm not. We're sitting down taking a rest at the public library. Oh, well, you're getting a ticket. So, Sir, I told you this before. I'm gonna have to come right back into town with my with my sheep because they're my pets. Right. So you then I would. Back in town, then, I'll sight in town then I'll have to break the law. Uh, uh, apparently break the law, but I'm not breaking the law. Show me the law. Another ticket. Show me the law, oh, please, you can sir. Look it up at you. No. The judge can show you whatever. No. Show me the law right so, now. Here, I'll look, look it up. Name? I'll look it up right now. What What is okay. your What is it's your? It's the Phoenix Municipal Code. Okay. okay. And I'll give you the number. But why don't you give me your name? Let me get this. Let me get this on film first. Okay. Okay. This is ridiculous, dude. You guys got... I just had a police officer asking me if I had seen a purse snatcher. Don't you guys have better things to do? Like, no, literally, I'm just coming this, back through like, town. Literally, all I have to do. This is my job. What is this your is, officer's up, name? Or, I do the ordinance. What is your name? Code enforcement officer. Officer Muck? Officer Muck. Okay. We talked before. I talked... We talked before Blue Hair. Uh, yeah, and, um, and, and again, we are not keeping animals in town. We are well, taking a rest coming through town. Possession. And they're pretty good... What do they weigh a piece? Uh, what is that? I'm just asking you. <laughs> Mr. Muck, what's your first name? This is going to be funny. To, uh, you're just giving me content to post up on my YouTube channel. Okay. Um, okay, so, uh, and, uh, and to complain about the authorities. You can look that up. I am I'm doing oh, that right now. Looking it up. Why don't you give me your name? Let me see what the ordinance is so that we can avoid even having to create a bigger problem because that's what, that's what you're asking to do by, by just... And I'll, I'll have to ask you to call your superior if you don't let me look up this law and show you. You are more than welcome to look up Thank you. Law. Okay, what's the, uh, what's the Phoenix? You ready? Phoenix Municipal Ordinance. Yeah, let me put this in here. Okay. 
Thank you for your cooperation. I appreciate oh, it. Absolutely. I just want. I just. I'm not trying absolutely. to do anything bad. No. Okay. Thank so. You. Uh, I get it. Okay. Like so. Like I said, we talked before. Phoenix. P H O E N I X. Phoenix. Oregon. And what is the municipal code? Municipal code. Cold. I'm sorry, I couldn't copy. Yes. Code. Yeah. Secondary. Yes. What's the number? You ready? Yeah. Six. Dot o four dot o five o. Thank you for finding it. No person shall keep livestock within city limits of Phoenix domestic livestock or in or insects that can be raised to contribute to a family's. You can't raise. We can't raise uh, insects either. Apparently, uh, limited to bees. Uh, yeah, maximum two hives chickens this is all having to do with private property sir okay thank you thank you for you looking it up now now, now we know what you can tell that to the judge no i'm not taking you cannot give me a ticket for something that we're proving right here is not breaking the law i'm gonna give you the ticket then call your supervisor when the other officer gets here and then if you don't want to give me what your name your name then we can do it a different way Uh, we're going to do it a different way. I'm going to call a non-emergency right now because I don't sure. like this. This Go is ridiculous. It. You're entitled to do that. Thank you. It'd be a lot easier if you just gave me your name. It'd be a lot easier if you wouldn't be harassing me. This is ridiculous, brother. Muck. This is clearly the law is talking about people's property. Okay, we are taking arrest. We're allowed public thoroughway. Possession. And they're in your possession. No, they're not in my possession. Look at my hands. They're not in my possessions right now. And, and as soon as they get up, we're walking on. My and that's what I told you before, be last year. Possession. What? My argument be there in your possession. Your they argument, live, why you gotta be so, they, so argumentative? They, live, they look they at you smiling, else. look at you I, trying I just, to do I, I this. You're this. being a jerk, dude. Okay. You're being a straight d dude. You're being a jerk, straight okay. up. And everyone's, okay. what's your first name? Officer. What's your first name? Let me spell it for you. No, what's your first name? What does it matter? Because I'm going to post and I'm going to link your name on YouTube so that anyone, yeah, I'm going to do everything I can. If you're going to be a jerk in everything that you can do to be a jerk to me, yeah, I'm going right. to do everything that I can do. This is ridiculous. Okay. God, this is not emergency. That's okay with me. This is ridiculous that you're bullying me because you're bored or something. I don't know. Or you have it in for me or... Or my response initially wasn't was it was it submissive enough for you, which is ridiculous. Hi, is this the Phoenix non-emergency number? Uh, this is this is the police department. This isn't the dispatch number, but this is the police department. How can I help you? Hi, um, I was just wanting to uh, um, I'm trying to get a hold of the uh, non-emergency number. I'm needing to have a supervisor um, brought out to a. Um, a uh a officer who's being uh difficult um he's saying that i'm breaking a law and i had him in trying to give me a ticket and i um had him look it up um after he was refusing and just trying to get my name and just write me a ticket and put the burden on me and uh once i finally found the law uh we found the law then it uh it clearly states that this law is that i'm not breaking this law and he's still trying to hold me here and get my information to give me a ticket and, and so, you're, with the, you're with him right now? Yes, it's Officer Muck. Okay. Uh, I need his supervisor um, uh, if, if he's going to continue pressing this. Um, I don't need his, uh, se his senior officer, which he tried to call. He tried to call backup, basically, after I asked him to call. Um, yeah, he did. After I asked him to call supervisor, I need a supervisor. He called for backup, and that's not what I asked for. I don't need someone who is going to take his sides. I need someone who's more responsible and, and is going to take this more seriously. Let me see if I have the chief here, okay? Thank, thank you, the chief, exactly. That's what, I'm, that's what I asked for, is a superior chief of some sort. Okay, well, well, the person who he asked for is also, um, he's, he, he is an upper level officer, so that's why I asked him to call backup. Okay, well, that would probably be the reason. So let me put you on hold, and let me see if he's here, okay? Hold thank on. you. What was your name, ma'am? My name is Janelle. Janelle, thank you, Janelle. I appreciate mm -hmm. your patience. One moment. We're sitting here, taking a rest. We've been here for a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. JC just got up. Now we're ready to leave. 
But of course, this guy has it in to give us a, try to give us a ticket, which is not is not legitimate. And it's very annoying when I'm obviously not breaking a law. And I'm obviously not a bad person. He's trying to make, make it out to be something it's not. And this is not the first time. This is the third time that he's done this. This is harassment at this point. So I'm going to get ready and leave like we were going to. I'm gonna get you up, Willie. Ready, go. Willie, Willie, Willie. Are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay. So, unfortunately, the chief is not here. Um, I, I went and searched for him. I thought he was Hi. over around. Um, so, what I can do is you can stop into the city and you can get a. I can get your information and you. Give you a call, you can fill out a complaint form. Sure, well. sure. So I can stop by the, the station right now. Yeah, if you'd like, you can fill out a complaint form. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, I'll meet uh, all these guys back at the police station. All right, sounds uh, great. Okay, thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye. All righty. First, we're writing a ticket. No, first, we're going to go back. Hi, no, sir. No. This is the third time that, uh, that he's tried to uh, apply. And if you want to look at the law, the law clearly states that the only law on the books is pertaining to people's backyards, keeping them. And it talks about bees and it talks about all the different animals that you're allowed to have in your backyard. And he keeps trying to stick at me with, he, he, sa he keeps saying that he's defining keeping animals as me having possession of them is what he keeps saying. And I keep saying every time that he stops me walking through or taking a rest, literally we were resting here for what, 45 minutes? We got here for 15 minutes before I saw you and they were laying down at the time, weren't they? Exactly. She just got up, and then this is on film. I'm recording again. I'm recording too. And okay, and and he's still resting, but he's not the one that I'm really concerned about. Even though he carries my pack boxes, she's my milker, and she's the the main one that I try to take care of uh, rest wise. So when she's ready to go, then then we can move on. But so the point is, is that this does not warrant a ticket. I'm not. I do not need the burden of 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 going to uh, court for this because this. These are my animals. I have no place to put them. I can't go into court. Okay, so let's let's go down to the police office. If you want to, if we're you want to write continue. Your ticket before we no, we're anymore. not. We're, she yeah, said we she said that we can she's go gonna, down there first. She's not, she's not in charge yet. No, okay. she said that I can go no, down there I'll and talk to him. Before you. Is not in charge. It's going to help me get your name. I'm going to write you a ticket, so, and you. I'm not taking the, the ticket. I'm not taking the ticket. You can do whatever you want. No, I'm not taking the ticket, and I'm not. That's fine. We're going to get Can I meet you down there? After he uh, writes the ticket, I'll meet you down there, yes. No, 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 I want, to, I want your chief to be there because I asked right for a now. supervisor. I know, he's not, uh, but she, he will be there as soon as we yes. get down there. She said he'll be so, back in a second, okay? Right. I got this on record. So, um, so we'll meet down there. She said I can meet down there so that we don't have to unnecessarily muck up the process, okay? Oh, good call. Okay? That was a good one. We're not going anywhere until I write your ticket. Okay, look, that's what's going to happen. I, I, I'm, I'm done talking with you, okay? I'm done talking with you. I'm well, talking with you. He has a job to do. He's a code enforcer. Okay, he you, knows sir. the codes a lot better than you do. No, no. Do you want me to show you the code Listen. right now? Thank you, sir. You want? Listen. You didn't believe me, right? So you have to do you want to provide see the, your identity for purposes of issuance of a citation. Okay, okay. but okay. no, you can't give me a citation for this because I clearly haven't broken a law. And You're therefore, an I, ordinance. I have not broken an ordinance, and I'm not going to court to prove that because the burden is not on me. Burden is on him to be responsible. Burden, that's not correct. Burden is on you. No, it's not because I'm not breaking any ordinance. You got a pile over there. You're gonna look clean up before you go anywhere there. The, no, I have poop cups on my sheep. Okay. Well, they must have outdone their poop cups because you got a pile there over is there. There is a pile. Sure over not here. from the dog. Okay, then I, I can. If that if that's mine and not deer, then I would take. I'll take. I don't think there's any other sheep running look, around. See look. Here, if you want to step in the shade, you can see. See, no person shall keep livestock. This is talking about people's people's uh, property, and then it gets onto this. No person shall keep a livestock within the city limits of Phoenix, domestic livestock or insects that can be raised for to contribute to a family's livelihood, limited to bees, chickens, rabbits, or goats, 
uh, weighing less. So you can even have goats in this town that are under, under, 100 under 100 pounds. The point is, is that I'm not keeping them here, and this is talking about people's backyards. And you're being a jerk, Mr. Muck. Okay. Straight up, dude. What is his first name? I'm put. I'm uh, officer. I told no, he won't even. If you don't give me I your first name, I'm not giving you my first name. Well, Straight up, that's legit, what? right? I'm gonna post his shit on on YouTube, <laughs> and I'm gonna post flyers on social network as much that's as I great. can because he's being a jerk. This is the that's third time fantastic. that I've had to deal with this guy, and he, that's why he's laughing. And I've you caught his smirking so, and listen, stuff like that. So that I, means you've I, already been talked to about this stuff, right? No, so, I. I, I told him the first time that he, he had the, the, the laws wrong, right? And he was like, okay, well, uh, well if, if I see you again, then I'll give you laws. So he came and he handed me the, the uh, paperwork out the, out the window, big, long, freaking p paperwork, like the whole thing, mm -hmm. and then drove off. And as soon as he was gone, I was like, there it is, right there. And then I threw the paperwork away, and then here it is a year later. I'm coming through again. This has all been like one year apart. This is fucking ridiculous. Which means you should know better. No, it I means you should to. know better. I told you the first time. The second time, I told you again, and I'll find this in here, let's but you said you had to go let's on. Just get your name. So no, you, you give me your first on. name. What's your first name? Then I'm not. Then my first name doesn't matter. Don't you agree? No, I don't. No, the point is, I haven't broken the law. You saw it right here. It's talking about people's backyards. Which can You're live in possession. Which can live you compatibly in, in an urban setting. Uh, make uh, may be permitted. You are in possession. No, I'm not in possession. Literally. So if they're not in possession, then what are you? Do they go everywhere with you? Do they stay with you? Do they sleep with you? Yes. Watch this. You want to you, you watch them you? follow me? Watch. You want to see them follow me? Let's go. I don't want to see them follow you. I don't stand. Let's go. Come on, Willie. Let's go. Oh my God! They just sit there. They'll be here tomorrow. No, they won't. So you are. Look at that. Look they at you. you. What? He actually likes to carry it because obviously he didn't move. You're being a jerk, dude. Straight up, you're being a jerk. That's why. That's why I'm calling for your supervisor because you are not being. You're not being legit. Thank you for bringing him to the side and talking with him. Hello. How you doing, sir? Pretty good. I'm just trying to uh, document um, this uh, this law that he's trying to apply to me walking through town. My, I, I'm a filming right now, by the way. Um, my so name, am I, by the way. Okay, thank you. My name's Aaron. Um, I'm just coming through town. We were sitting, they were sitting down. We were resting. I was having my lunch that I got from the Mexican restaurant down on the corner. Okay. And they were resting uh, down there. And this is the third time in like maybe three years that he has, he, that this officer has tried to apply the, the urban live, livestock laws okay. to me that talk about keeping the different animals that you can keep in your backyard. In which case, each time I say, if we're walking through, I'm like, dude, I'm not keeping them. And he says, each time he says, you're, you're, you have them on a leash, you're in possession of them. And I'm like, dude, come on, are you joking? This law says that, that it's for, uh, for people's backyards, you know, like you're being ridiculous. So he's trying to give me a ticket now, and I'm telling him, no, I have not broken a law. And as soon as they got up, I said, now we'll be on our way, like uh, both the, the other times before. There's no freaking problem here. You're being, you're being outlandish you're being ridiculous no him oh, okay. um he, he's interpreting he's trying to interpret them to uh to apply to me when clearly they do not and he's trying to put the a burden on me okay. to go to court in which case i can't do because these are my animals they're with me all the time and they freak out if i leave them okay and uh i needed a, a supervisor so i asked him if he would call a supervisor because he kept repeating that that uh, he needed to um that he needed to write me a ticket for this. And, I, and after I showed him the law that says and describes, and have you seen the law? Uh, is it a muni law? A muni, uh... So basically what happened yesterday with the Phoenix police is that um, Lieutenant Price showed up and my phone ran out of battery about that time but in short I explained to him uh, everything that had happened um, and, uh, and included uh, my other uh, times having to deal with this officer Tim Muck um, bending the laws and cherry picking the wording um, of their laws uh, to try to write me a ticket um, for walking my sheep through town or for resting so uh, he ended up saying uh, that the law could technically be interpreted uh, to uh, to mean what uh, what uh, Officer Muck was uh, was claiming, 
And so uh, technically this could be a uh, situation for the judge to decide, but um, if I agreed to um, to not come into town um, or through town anymore, uh, he, he offered to let me uh, come through town because I, need, I told him I needed throughway. Um, he offered to let me uh, go through on the bike path, but then Tim Muck spoke up again and um, and was like, "Oh, actually, no. He's not allowed to come through on the on the bike path either, because because it says within city city limits." Um, I'm like he kept cherry picking the words, even though people ride their horses through on the bike path all the time. So he's being ridiculous. He's being a bully, is what he was being. So Lieutenant Price said that he would let uh, let me go this time without a ticket. Um, if I uh, come back, then um, Tim Muck will have uh, every right to give me a ticket so that I can uh, so that I will have to go um, before a judge um, and and it basically uh, explain. Um, my situation and Tim Muck explain the situation, his angle, and have the judge decide from there. And so, yeah, that's uh, that's what happened. Now my two options are um, the two reasonable options. I could leave here, but leaving here is not going to help. Um... I, I already have not made a dent in uh, creating a positive impact on this community, um, a, a positive sustainability or eco example with this community um, as is. Um, and I've been doing this around this Rogue Valley for five years and even traveling outside of it all the way up to Washington and out to the coast, walking my sheep um, just as proof that you can do such a thing. But then I come back... And it still hasn't made a dent. Everyone's just trying to ignore me. Um, and I have relatively no support compared to the support that other people have for um, lesser altruistic um, intentions. I think that's part of the problem is that uh, people don't like altruism because it makes them feel bad about not doing anything good with their own life. And so they just try to ignore you um, and not support you because they don't want you to do good things for the community because they feel bad about not doing good things about for the community anyway um so if i haven't made a dent in five years you know i'm not going to start over again i'm not going to go to another place and just have them do the same thing that medford and ashland and now phoenix are doing which are legally um pushing me out of uh of the community um preventing me from from coming through the community and sharing my uh my website and my solutions with people so um so i'm not not gonna go up to the willamette and try to reestablish this um willamette valley is the valley north of us up in from eugene to portland it's much bigger and pff, it would take much longer for people to um to legally bar me from uh, from going into communities to the point where I was feeling um, blocked in. Like, I feel blocked in right now. Um, I literally feel claustrophobic. I already felt claustrophobic before Phoenix. As soon as Ashland did it, I, 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 you got Medford, Phoenix, Talent, and then Ashland. And Medford doesn't allow a livestock to be walked through town, and it's been like that for uh, for like 20 years because it's a big city and, and they don't want horses walking through town so they just uh, made a broad sweeping law that you can't walk livestock through town. Then my hometown of Ashland that I've been an activist in for 10 years it's oh so inclusive and spiritual and eco-friendly. Uh, they followed suit and their city councilors followed suit with uh, the Medford ordinance um, to, to match the Medford ordinance and, uh, and prevent me from uh, walking my goats and sheep in and through town. So I've been barred between Phoenix and Talent and had to go around Medford if I want to go over to, to Jacksonville or if I want to go to Central Point, I have to go around Medford uh, and, then, and then north if I want to go to the north of the valley. So now I'm in between, I'm just from Talent to that's it because this is a narrow 
uh, valley going this way, um, it's really confining. Um, Willamette Valley is much wider. But like I said, um, if, the, if it's not going to make a difference what I'm doing at all, people are just going to like they tr literally try to ignore me and try to and then try to work against me then um i don't know i guess the next step if i stay here is that they'll they supposedly will join me or whatever or they'll um i don't know as gandhi said you'll win or whatever i'm not trying to win i'm trying to i'm trying to get people to see this obvious um we more sustainable option uh pet option what I call a producer pet. She still provided me with a quarter gallon a day. And it's over a year later. And from her lactation. Her son's like a year old now. And when you walk them around like this. And feed them this, their favorite salad. And, and the different flavors that, of the soil that it comes from. In the different areas. They continue eating. And if they continue eating. They continue making milk. If you milk them, milk them regularly. So... Uh, this is a, a lot more sustainable than a domesticated cat or dog. Um, getting a pet goat, which is legal to have, even in Phoenix, you can have goats under a hundred pounds. You can have two of them in your backyard. Actually, it didn't even say how many number you could have, so you could probably have three or four. So, most every town and city, you can have uh, two miniature-sized dairy goats under a hundred pounds. And it's a far more sustainable uh, option for people, uh, considering shit could hit the fan and they need local food security. Um, it's a sustainable option, uh, having a producer pet instead of having a consumer pet, uh, since domesticated cats and dogs even um, don't wholly feed themselves and can't wholly feed themselves because they've been so domesticated. So... Um, yeah, the, the dogs and the cats are just going to be a um, a double difficulty of um, of food security when it's a fan and you're not able to feed it dog food. Um, you're not only going to have to worry about providing your own food in a sustainable, self-sufficient way, but you're going to have to think about your dogs. And that's going to be added motivation for people to want to rob their neighbor for their food so they can not only feed themselves but feed their dogs so it's going to just lend to the rationale for people to um rob and pillage each other um and i see this coming um because i have foresight and i'm more responsible than most people in society um so uh i've been trying to share this option with people by doing what i'm doing for five years now and I just, uh, I can't imagine it being a smart option to go on to another valley. But at the same time, being limited to talent, I mean, I guess I could just try to stay here until talent changes the laws too. And then, and then, you know, that, that'll be just obviously a, a, a documented obvious, um, atrocity to, um, to the sustainability of, of the communities around here um but i think that a better option is to have these uh, these bicycle these tricycles they're car cargo tricycles they're basically a bicycle three-wheel bicycle that has a huge cargo bed in back and you can get them with a little electric motor and uh i'd like to get one and make it like a covered wagon um there's a lady in Europe that uh, rode one electric version across Europe with two uh, mini ponies in the back that probably weighed like freaking 400 pounds each. And these guys only weigh like 130 pounds each. So, yeah. Um, not only that, but her ponies were taller. So my sheep being shorter in in uh, a little covered livestock bicycle trailer um i could actually have enough height above my sheep that i could make a loft and i could actually sleep up there 
and it could be like a tiny home slash livestock trailer and then I would legally be able to go back into Ashland without leaving my animals. I could bring them with me and spread the smiles and bring them around to yards and continue on with the sheep and goats uh, mowing service that I had started years ago that I had to stop doing in Ashland when they changed the laws to get rid of me and my sheep. So I think that's the smartest, uh, smartest avenue I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to fundraise for a uh, cargo tricycle. And then I'm going to turn it into a covered wagon to transport my sheep. My dairy sheep. And if that's the case, then, uh, then my ram here uh, won't really be of the same logical service uh, of a pack ram. And in which case, uh, I believe that he um, has her pregnant now. I'll know in the next couple days if she doesn't go back into heat. So in five months, four and a half months now, she will, um, she'll have a lamb or multiple lambs. And hopefully one of those would be a female. And if it's a female, then um, I can rehome Wooly here um, to a farm that wants to use him for breeding. And, uh, and then I'll raise uh, her, her ewe lamb to be my second milker. I think it'd be reasonable just to ha keep two and uh, both of those uh, to be females so that I can um, so I can alternate them being in milk um, even though they can stay in milk longer than half a year um, I think it'd be best um, best example so, yeah that's an update done with my buckwheat sheep milk cereal and just in time because the uh, sorghum sourdough bread is done let that cool off. Yay. And I put some honey in, so it's solar baked sweet sourdough sorghum bread. Now I'm going to take my sprouted buckwheat and I'm going to wait a couple days on my sp sprouted sorghum. Uh, buckwheat grows much faster than any other grain. And I'm going to plant this, gorilla grow it, um, right back here in this riparian zone so that it'll continue to get uh, enough moist ground moisture um, until the wet season fully starts. It's August, mid-August right now, and buckwheat only takes 70 days from seedling to a uh, mature plant that you can harvest more, more uh, buckwheat off of. And the sorghum's really fast too. The sorghum is uh, only 90 days. Most grains are like 120 or longer so, yeah, I'm gonna go gorilla garden this over in the right barrier zone so that we'll have grain to sustainably harvest uh, before winter.